Yes. Is it going? Okay, let me have your attention up front. Do you have page 147 done? If you have page 147, turn to that page. If you don't have 147, go to Creator Math and just pull up the notes. Does this make sense? Are you with me? Okay, are you ready to go? So, here's the problem in your mind. What, tell me about the word similar. 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 Good? No. Tell me about it. No. It must be in another building. Tell me about the word similar. There's two uses of the language. Normal language and geometry. Congruency is a geometry term, right? Similar has two meanings. One is in your normal language, and then another one you have to switch into ge uh, geometry for. I keep hearing it too. I keep hearing the fire alarm. Is that coming from your device? Is that what's happening? Okay, it keeps freaking me out. <laughs> okay, <laughs> attention over here. Tell me about similar in your normal language. What does similar mean in normal language? They have things in common. Okay, if two cars are similar to you in normal language, what might be the same? Same color. They're both the same brand. They're both Hondas. Same engine type. What else could make them similar? The headlights. The type of headlights. The color. Uh, the bumper style. What else? Horsepower. Maybe the engines are, are similar horsepower. Are you with me? Do you hear all the different things you're saying? It's a lot. Now I want you to switch to geometry. Switch your brain to geometry and switch with the meaning of similar. What's the one word that can help you in geometry? Equal. When it comes to the word sim similar, what's the word I want you to mention? Congruency. What is it? Congruency. Congruency is when they're both the same. This is different. Okay, everybody say proportional. What is proportional to you? What is proportional? How? So I want you to think of the helicopter. We talked about the helicopter already, right? Tell me about the helicopter. It's a model. It has a scale. Say scale factor. Because proportional means that this one is exactly alike the giant one, but by a scale factor. In fact, this one's a 1 43rd scale. So if the whole length of the real one were 43 feet, how long would this one be? Pretty long. <laughs> if it's a 1 43rd scale and the real one's 43 feet long, how long would this one be? One foot, because you took the 43 feet, divided it into one foot, and that's how long this one was. Now, it's not quite that, right? So I don't know if the original is 43 feet long, because this isn't a foot long, right? You with me? But if I took this length and I multiplied it by 43 feet, I'd have the length of the real helicopter. This is what proportional means. Say proportional again. And the hard part for your, uh, hard part, excuse me, for your brain to process right now is that similar in geometry means proportional. Are you okay with this? Okay, let me have your attention. What does similar mean in geometry? Good, everybody say proportional. Good, thank you, Andrew, thank you for that. Right? Okay, so now you're turning to the lesson. You're looking at our two triangles proportional to each other. So here's two triangles. Are they proportional to each other? Is one larger or smaller by a scale factor? It's okay? So in this one you're doing AA. It stands for Angle Angle Similarity Postulate. Now you must say similarity each time because these start to sound a lot like congruency postulates. Remember all the congruency postulates? So you've got to say AA. What's AA stand for, you guys? Good. Angle Angle Similarity Postulate. So if I have an angle of one triangle, 34 degrees matching with an angle of another triangle, 34 degrees, and I have a second angle, 42 degrees, matching with a second, what can I say about these two triangles? That they are similar 
And my reason is I'm using angle angle similarity postulate. Is this okay? Kind of basic. So one of them is smaller and the other is bigger, the real helicopter, right? And they're proportional because this one looks exactly like that one, right? And that's what it is, but a lot simpler because it's not all the details of height and width and all that. It's just simpler. It's just the three angles and the two and the three sides. This is okay. And we're using this angle angle similarity postulate. Now, what is the scale factor? Can you tell me the scale factor between these two? What would be this? So we were able to determine scale factors before. Like look over here at these. This one went from 5 to 15, from 7 to 21, and from 9 to 27. What do we multiply by 5 to get 15? 3. Oh, 3. 3. What do we multiply the 7 by to get 21? 3. And the 9 by to get 27. 3. So the scale factor is 3 in this direction. If I was going from big to small, it would be 1 third because I would be shrinking it. I have to divide to shrink. I have to multiply to expand. What's the scale factor in this case? One. Seven. One. One. How do you know? Why are you coming up with one? If you multiply, it's going to be the same. Ah, I see where you're headed with one. Because the angles are the same. But remember, scale factor is comparing the side lengths. Mm -hmm. Do you see any side lengths here? No, these are angles. Yes, the angles are one to one. But how long are the sides? Go like this. X is unknown. You're saying, I don't know. In this case, there's not enough information. What is the scale factor? We don't know because no side links are given. You with me? You can't know the scale factor right now. There's not enough information until somebody tells us more about the links of the sides. Is this okay for you? Okay, sometimes when you learn things, you're learning you can't do it, right? So this is a, I can't do it right now. There's not enough information. All right, so how do you write similarity? Everybody knows the symbol for similarity is this squiggly line right here. Right? Congruency had the equals under it. Similarity only has the squiggly line. That's the, this triangle, ABC, is similar to this triangle, DEF. All right, fair enough. Okay, look at these two triangles. Everybody look up here. Look at the two angles and compare them. Can you say they're similar by the angle-angle postulate? Why not, Melanie? First of all, are your eyes linking up the 100 and the 100? Those are the same, right? What's this one? This is 50, and this is 30. Are they the same? No, they're not the same. So do I have an angle-angle similarity postulate going on here? So let's jump back and just think about calculating the angles of a triangle so your brain can reconnect that, right? How many degrees are in a triangle if you add up all three uh, angles? 180, right? So what's this come to? 150. What does this got to be? 30. 30. So this is 30. So are there two angles of this one that match two angles of that one? Yep. So they are similar by the angle angle postulate. The answer is yes. You just had to do a little bit of work to find the third one. Does it make sense to you why angle angle has to be similar? Because once you have two that are the same, the third one must be also because they always have to subtract from the 180 number. Does that click up maybe in your mind? Okay, maybe it will when you're going through the school G2. All right? Okay, pretty simple. So here's a one last time. In your mind, you're separating the use of the word similar between your normal life. When you're talking to your parents about two things are similar, that's different than when you're talking in geometry class about similar. What's the one important word you got to remember when you're thinking of similar in geometry class? Proportional. 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 Good. And that's what it is. And from that first lesson, you can set up a proportion from it and even solve problems with it. Okay, good. Hit stop on that.